everyone just a few weeks before Samsung is set to release their newest Galaxy S20 phones, there is a new addition to the Galaxy S10 lineup, the Galaxy S10 Lite. Now, this phone is cheaper than a regular S10, and it has a different set of features than the S10e. For one, it has a bigger battery, and it has a bigger screen. It's also missing a headphone jack. Now, before I can get into all of its key features, here's a quick unboxing. The first thing you'll see in the box is the S10 Lite itself. Ours is in prism black, and naturally the entire design is very subtle. Under the phone is a cable and a wall adapter that support 25 watt fast charging. Next to them is a pair of Samsung USB-C headphones. They don't seem particularly high quality, but they're useful to have in a pinch. If you turn the top half of the box upside down, you'll find another box that holds the SIM ejector tool and some instructions. So now that we have the phone in hand, I'm Angie for GSM Marina, and these are the key features of the Galaxy S10 Lite. The S10 Lite has a clean design, especially since our unit is in prism black. The fingerprint-loving back is made of glass, and it has an off-center rectangular camera bump that's wide enough to prevent the phone from wobbling too much in flat surfaces. On the front, there's a small centered hole punch. With a 6.7-inch screen, the phone is far from small, but it's surprisingly light. Perhaps due to the weight, it doesn't seem that sturdy, and there's no mention of IP protection, so you should definitely use a case for it. Sadly, there's no headphone jack, but with the removal of the jack in the Galaxy Note 10, this doesn't really come as a huge surprise. That said, the S10 Lite does not have a wide range of hi-fi Bluetooth codecs, and this should really be a standard on jackless phones at this point. The S10 Lite has an optical fingerprint reader instead of an ultrasonic one. This can be an advantage because you can use regular screen protectors without affecting its usability, and our initial impressions are that it's faster. The 6.7-inch Super AMOLED display has a Full HD resolution and supports HDR10 Plus content. The pixel density is an unimpressive 394 ppi, but it should be enough for most people. The phone supports Android 10 with the rather confusingly named One UI 2. It has Samsung's usual barrage of features, and it has both Google's and Samsung's gestures to choose from. So navigation should be easy, even with the phone's mammoth size. The S10 Lite has a 4,500 mAh battery, so its endurance should be excellent. Unlike the S10 series, the Lite supports 45 watt fast charging, although the charger that comes in the box is a 25 watt one. The S10 Lite has a Snapdragon 855 and either 6 or 8 gigs of RAM. This means it'll be able to handle pretty much everything you throw at it with ease. Unlike the S10e, the S10 Lite has a triple camera setup. The 48 megapixel main shooter has super steady OIS. It combines EIS and OIS and creates gimbal-like stabilization even for 4K video. There's also a 12 megapixel ultrawide camera and a 5 megapixel macro camera, which sadly isn't quite as useful as a telephoto would have been. Still, it'll be interesting to compare the two phones' photography capabilities in the full review. The S10 Lite is a really interesting offering from Samsung. It's priced right at flagship killer territory. It has a nice chipset and it has a huge battery, but it'll take some testing to see just how competitive it is in comparison to the rest of the market. Now, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and we'll try to get to them in the full review. Subscribe so you don't miss it, and I'll see you guys next time.